A very important source of development finance comes from international trade. For many decades, the whole world actually has been uh, benefiting from globalization, collaboration, uh, economic growth uh, has uh, been spectacular in large parts of the world. Uh, countries no longer wish to produce everything that they wish to consume. They want to import certain things that they're not good at in producing. It costs more money for them to produce and export stuff that they have uh, competence and expertise uh, on. So there's this kind of exchange uh, collaboration being facilitated by uh, major international organizations, multilateral uh, organizations like the World Trade Organization, WTO. But in recent years, there's been much more of this concern on how international trade is playing out. There are uh, definitely, there is much more tension between major world powers like the, uh, the United States and China, but also between Europe and the United States. So all of this is leading to much more of an uncertain policy environment. Countries are unsure. They're worried that the, uh, the goods they produce are not fetching high enough uh, prices in the international market. They're afraid of uh, protectionist policies that other countries are implementing that makes exports much more expensive. Uh, the US has often um, increased tariffs on certain imports, which affects the kind of exports that China sends uh, to the US. So all of this is creating tension, uncertainty, and how this will play out in the near future is going to be extremely important in terms of making financing available uh, for the SDGs. Uh, and related to this uh, aspect is the fact that trade or this kind of uncertainty is not just affecting low income countries, it's also affecting high income countries. And my own country, Norway, is a very good example in this context. So Norway, uh, a lot of Norway's income is uh, dependent on oil. And with the uh, collapse of the oil market, the demand for oil has just dropped dramatically. It has been for, for a while, but now more so during the pandemic that we're currently facing. Um, Norway has to actually figure out new sources of revenue, new forms of uh, perhaps investment in other arenas so that in the future, the money that uh, that uh, Norway will be able to earn is not just dependent on oil. One of the good things that Norway has done in terms of ensuring that uh, it still has ample access to revenue from oil is the sovereign wealth fund that Norway created. Uh, it has invested wisely and is saving for a rainy day. And not all countries in the world have been able to do uh, that kind of um, ensure or introduce that kind of mechanism. So nor one of the major ways in which Norway actually has been um, advising certain low-income countries is uh, through this so-called tax for development uh, program where it uh, advises countries to be much more prudent to uh, be aware of how the revenue is coming and how it is saved and invested so um, uh, developing capacity thinking uh, along uh, sort of long-term policies uh, long-term returns is what Norway tries to do but going back to this issue of how trade is affecting um, different uh, uh, types of countries. Low-income countries in particular are, of course, uh, much more vulnerable to any changes, any uncertainty in international trade, particularly because they are uh, so-called commodity uh, dependent. So this commodity dependency is a state where the exports of primary commodities account for more than say 60% of a country's uh, export revenue. And this, this can be a serious burden for low income uh, country capacity uh, to finance the SDGs if there are major fluctuations in terms of earning from these commodity exports, uh, which will in turn directly affect uh, these countries' uh, public revenues. So um, returning to again, Malawi is a great example. Uh, Malawi uh, depends on uh, the exports of tobacco, cotton, tea, coffee, and any slight change in um, prices um, of course, there's also the risk of weather uh, patterns, etc. And climate change has made uh, the production of many of these commodities much more um, uh, difficult. Uh, but once these commodities are produced, and if these don't fetch enough uh, prices in the international market, that, that can also be a, a problem. Related to trade is the ability of countries to actually take on debt. 
Now, debt is a very important part of financing the sustainable development uh, agenda. Uh, why is it important? Well, it's because SDG investments, at least many of the SDG investments, can generate the resources to repay the debt. So many international reports are actually finding that uh, and encouraging countries and private sector actors to invest in the SDGs. For example, in health or education, in, in terms of poverty reduction, uh, in terms of food, that the returns are actually very, very high. So this can be a very profitable enterprise. But countries often don't have the resources and they have to borrow and they often have to borrow heavily or uh, the interest rates are so high that they're unable to repay their debts. Some of these countries who need financing are already in debt. So the extent to which one can um, come out of this debt crisis, this, uh, this spiral that leads to even more indebtedness is, is going to be crucial uh, in, in, in the years ahead. And uh, the IMF, for example, has estimated that um, investments in the SDGs, particularly in, in areas that uh, require much more public spending, such as education, health, roads, electricity, water and sanitation, would require an, an, an additional annual spending of about 15 percentage points of GDP in the poorest countries. The extent to which countries, therefore, have access to loans and the, the way in which these loans are designed, the way in which these have to be repaid in the future, the kind of interest, the conditionalities, all of this is uh, going to be crucial. Some civil society activists believe that uh, major institutions like the IMF are simply not doing enough, uh, that they're talking a lot about the SDGs, but they're basically um, using the same kind of uh, programs, mechanisms to fund, to provide uh, loans to poor countries that they were doing before. And the need of the R is to make sure that any access to f uh, additional loans, etc., for the SDGs are perhaps redesigned, uh, keeping the best interests of these poor countries in mind. So borrowing is an important tool and it's very critical for achieving sustainable development, but it has to be done and managed prudently. And debt sustainability is going to be crucial in the years ahead.